All right, let's try a modification on the previous uh, program. In the previous program, we created a large number of buttons in a large number of rows. Uh, and there were several hundred items in the input file, and we created several hundred rows in the grid, and each of the rows was populated by a separate button, which is a lot of buttons and a lot of rows. Uh, it can be done differently. It can be done as a small number of, um, of rows and an independent scroll bar. The scroll bar now in, in this example will be independent. We're not doing it in a scroll uh, window. We're doing a, a, a window with a grid which will have eight rows to it and we'll have a separate scroll bar that will operate on it independently. This is what the Glade uh, looks like. It's um, Again, the scroll window's gone. I've got window, I've got fixed, I've got view one, same as before, grid one in here, and the scroll one. That is at the same level as the view uh, one. It is a scroll bar. It's a separate independent scroll bar here. The grid, again, there seems to be a bug in Glade. Um, it's supposed to be um, one by eight, uh, one column by eight rows. And even if I save it as such, it ignores me when I read it back in. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna add the rows independently myself anyhow, but there is some kind of a glitch in the current version of Glade. At least it appears to be, and maybe I'm doing something I'm wrong and it just hates me. Anyway, the other thing here is the scroll. You notice it's shorter than the grid. That's because we don't, the grid is not being actually calculated for its correct size. Uh, we don't know, it does not know the size of the buttons. It doesn't even know how many rows there are. If I tell it how many rows, it's still wrong. So the, uh, the height or, uh, request for, which is down here on the, on the right, it's at 220. The height request for the scroll bar is from trial and error. You look at it, eh, it should be a little shorter, change it, look at it again, back and forth until you get the right request. Okay. So basically, it's a very simple Glade setup. It's a viewport, it's a grid, it's a scroll. Uh, in the scroll, I should mention, uh, we've done this before, but the signal we're going to handle is uh, scroll is when, uh, scroll one value changed. That's the, uh, that's the indicator that uh, the scroll has been um, moved. Okay, um, let's get that off the screen and let's get, um, let's try to clean it up here. All right, um, here is the code. The code hasn't changed very much. It's actually a little simpler. Um, we have uh, we don't have that scroll uh, window. We just got the grid. We've got view one. We got scroll one. The buttons have gone down to eight because at any given time there's only going to be there's eight buttons and there's eight rows. We're going to change the content of the buttons. We're not going to have uh, 200 buttons. We're going to have eight buttons. We're going to change the content. So there's only going to be eight buttons. Um, which is different than before where we just arbitrarily created an array of buttons. Uh, I've got two character strings here, temp and temp1. Row is the same as before. Row text is a, a collection of a thousand pointers, and they will point to character strings. The character strings they're pointing to will be the contents of the buttons. It'll be, in this case, it's something like 265 or 266 um, lines of text um, that come in from that uh, functions.text. Functions.text here, let's look at it for a second. Um, that's it, it's just function names of uh, GTK widgets and, um, and let's see, um, um, in more is the problem, I'm thinking I'm in VI. Um, but uh, let me get out of it. Um, and I'm, now I'm in VI. And the uh, last row there is 266. There are 266 rows, cleverly numbered 0 through 255. And you see I added an extra one at the bottom so that, I'm, uh, so that I'll know exactly that I've got the last one showing. It got a little bit confusing looking at all those last functions because they're all virtually the same name. And it's, um, so I just added an extra line there. That was not in the previous program. Um, get that off the screen. Okay, so row text will point to the text uh, from, those, um, from those lines. Uh, button content will tell me which row is in a button. Since uh, the eight buttons can actually be displaying any one of the 260, what was it, six? 266 rows, uh, I need to know what is in a button at any given time. So when I put a row into one of the buttons, I put into button content the integer saying from which actual row I, uh, I got the item. So uh, the contents here will actually point back to row text. 
Um, the number will refer to the index of the array row text. Row text, of course, is an array of pointers. All right, um, moving right along, everything's the same here. That's a slightly modified, and I've got the scroll one here. It wasn't there before, but otherwise the same. In terms of reading the file, it's the same as before. We open the file. We start, if, it's, if there's something wrong with it, we quit. We set row equal to zero, and we start um, looping. Uh, we read a line into temp1. Previously, this was temp. Um, and if we run out of lines, we quit. Uh, we chop off the new line character at the end of uh, temp1. We write into temp. Uh, this, is a, this is what's different. Um, the number of the row, followed by a colon, followed by two blanks. I don't know why two blanks. Um, and um, I don't know. I have two blanks there. Right. Um, the row number followed by uh, the actual contents of the row. I mentioned you could put a number at the front of each one of them. Well, here it is. Um, so I'll write that out since I modified. And then um, we put into the pointer row text sub row, where row is the index and row text is a pointer. We will put into it a pointer to a string. The string will be created by malloc, which is memory allocate. It will allocate a string of whose length is the length of temp, Plus one. You have to have plus one because we're going to need the new line, uh, need the null at the end. Uh, so if it's a 10 character string, we're going to need 11 characters because the null will be the 11th character. Uh, malloc return, you give malloc a, a number. Malloc actually allocates in like 16 byte uh, units. So um, if, if you left off the plus one, it would work for a while, and then all of a sudden it wouldn't because you'd hit one that was exactly wrong. Um, but most of the time, of course, if you're if, if it's allocating in 16s, you're uh, you know one in 16 chance of having an extra byte at the end anyway, um, or one in 15, I guess I don't know. Anyway, um, the malloc returns a pointer to void, so I can recast it to a pointer to character, and I should probably check to make sure I have not run out of memory. A null coming back would tell me I've run out of memory, but I kind of don't think so. I also have not haven't checked that the row, um, I guess I did check the row number down below. But anyway, I did not check for the malloc. Normally, you would check uh, to determine if the uh, if you ran out of memory. That would be indicated by a null coming back. Um, I copy into a uh, string copy from temp into the string pointed to by this uh, by uh, row text sub row. It's a pointer to that uh, memory or, um, area uh, allocated by malloc, and I'm copying in the actual value I read in. Okay, if row is less than eight, this is the first. Eight numbered zero through seven. These are the first eight rows I'm reading in, and I'm going to treat those differently than the rest. The first eight are going to get populated. Beyond the um, eight and beyond are not going to be shown. So I'm going to show the first page, as it were. I'm not going to. The others are not going to be visible. So if it's less than eight, in other words, it's between zero and seven. I uh, create the row. Here's where I'm actually um, inserting a row into the grid, uh, and the row number is specified. Uh, into um, I'm creating a button. The button will be numbered 0 through 7. I'm creating a button. Um, and the text of the button is going to be the text uh, pointed to by row text as indexed by row. Uh, so yes, we are. Uh, so there's the button being created. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, setting the alignment on the button so that it's left justified. That's the 0, 0.0. The uh, right, uh, the uh, that's the horizontal adjustment. The second one's the vertical adjustment, which is centered. And 0.5 means centered. One means to the right or to the top, I think, and um, so forth and so on. Anyway, I'm not worried about it. I just want it left justified instead of centered. Um, then I attach the button to the row uh, that I just created up above, and uh, I connect the signal. So the first eight buttons will have a signal, and the signal will go to the same function on row, same as before. Uh, and I put into button content sub row the number of the row that's in there. So in other words, um, first eight buttons numbered 0 through 7 will have numbers 0 through 7 in button content because that's, that's what they got. They got the first, um, they got the first eight. Increment the row count, check to see if I'm over limit. If I do, I just decrement it and break and continue on. It, just, it would continue to run. It would just not get any all the rows. Okay, then I print out the um, total number of rows, 
which is actually one higher than the act. I mean, so it's it, so it, you know we started at zero, so the uh, the number will be actually the row that we're referring to won't will not be an actually existing index number. It'll be an upper limit. Um, okay, then I set the range of the scroll bar from zero to row, row being the top of the range. Um, everything else is the same until I get down here to the um, to the uh, on scroll. Uh, here is the um, oh uh, um, let's see uh, get button um, yeah when you when you click the button you're going to get the label content of the button since there's only eight buttons now you're going to get one of those eight um, this is the part that's um, where the scroll is running and what the scroll does is it for this what this function does is it pulls out the value of the scroll where is the scroll positioned from zero up to the top. Um, if it's at the top, if it's greater than or equal to row, I backspace it by eight. So it backs up a page. You know, so, and, and then I display that page um, from I, which is someplace from zero to someplace in the, in, in the group of, of um, values. Uh, as long as I is less than I plus eight, which is, you know, a page in this thing, page being eight items, incrementing j. If uh, row is less than, um, and if j is less than row, I will print out row text. I will put, there's row text over here. It is going to go into the button, and the button will be j minus i, where, um, uh, where i, um, where j will be some number, j minus i will be a vet number in the range of zero through seven. Um, otherwise, I put a blank string in there. And the button content gets J, J being the absolute number, row number that we're playing with at this point in time. So these can get a little messy, but basically it's fairly simple. I'm just saying starting at some position, starting at um, basically I, I'm going to um, populate um, the, the first eight, the eight buttons with I through I plus eight. Um, and um, up to i plus eight, it's actually i through i um, i seven. But anyway, uh, which is eight values. And um, so you see a page. Does it work? Of course it works. Um, compile it, um, and there you see it. Uh, you see the height of the um, scroll bar is uh, different than it was in the Glade because of the um, because these things are obviously quite a bit thinner than they looked. And they're the same as before. So if I click on that one, you selected uh, four. Um, um, is that what I just selected? Yeah, there it is, four. Uh, I didn't know what I actually clicked. So that, that that's neat. That's the same as before. Now when I scroll this, uh, you can see uh, uh, the row. Sometimes the rows get a little, the uh, buttons get a little bigger. Um, you might want to uh, fix that on a fixed length, but um, because some rows are larger than other, there's a big one there. Um, all the way down the bottom, and there's my last. Uh, so I'm, I, in this example here, I only have eight rows in the grid. I only have eight buttons. And I reuse those eight rows in, in the grid and those eight buttons. Uh, it's um, this, uh, I, I don't know, it, it seems to me to be more efficient. It certainly works well enough. And you know, 117, you selected 170. Everything else seems to work just about the same. Well, does work just about the same, except you um, don't have a bazillion buttons and a, a bazillion rows in your grid. So that's a modification, and uh, there's a lot of cases where a separate scroll bar and then manipulate the thing itself separately rather than having a scroll window. All right.